2023 redesign of Mangrove brought a full rework of the module, introducing a number of new integrated circuits. While most behavior stays the same as the original design, there are some notable differences, which are all outlined in its web documentation. This video will focus on the accompanying module, PPM, which breaks out many of Mangrove's internal signals and connections to patch points, so you can reconfigure Mangrove into a wide range of complex oscillators. Traditionally, we think of the square output on Mangrove as a utility wave, while the formant output is the real deal. With PPM, you can invert this hierarchy between the oscillators via feedback. The top three jacks of PPM are additional outputs from the core oscillator of Mangrove, so like square, air does not affect their level. PWM is a pulse width modulated rectangular wave. The duty cycle of the rectangle is controlled by barrel, allowing for roughly 10 to 90% duty cycle from the panel counterclockwise to clockwise. PWM is especially interesting to combine with the formant output, as the barrel modulation has related influence on both signals. You should also try self-patching PWM to the air or formant inputs. Saw is a sawtooth waveform, generated by combining the triangle and square waves. It's not affected by barrel. and sine is a wave-shaped triangle directly from the oscillator core. It's also not affected by barrel. As we go through the following experiments, we'll keep Mangrove in constant wave and we'll monitor formant output. We'll start with nothing patched to trigger, and we'll use the mode switch to change modes for each exercise. We'll start with impulse. This is the historical Mangrove mode. The core oscillator sends triggers into the impulse oscillator, which will perform one cycle, then stop until the next trigger arrives. We'll use this mode for reedy sounds and the classic pitch division synthesis. Sync mode starts the impulse oscillator cycling while still triggering from the core oscillator. The effect is that of a soft sync as seen on other oscillators. The core, through pitch, is the sync source, while formant sets the base pitch. We can use this mode for digital style chirps and rippling timbre. For added dimensionality, try sending volt per octave to both formant and pitch. In 
cycle mode, the impulse cycles like a regular oscillator, and the core oscillator is ignored. So the module can be seen as two independent oscillators, with formant controlling the base pitch of the impulse cycle. If Mangrove is in constant wave, the impulse oscillator can be sequenced via volt per octave into pitch or formant. If Mangrove is in constant formant, the oscillator can only be sequenced via formant. These three modes can be modified further with the trigger input. This input accepts any standard Eurorack signal, triggering as the signal rises above around 2 volts. By default, this input is normalized from the sign output, except in cycle mode. So in impulse mode, the trigger source replaces the core oscillator as the base of the impulse generator. So you can self-patch a different core waveform to change the phase of the impulse, you know, try PWM for variable phase, or from an entirely different module to use Mangrove as a wave shaper for your favorite oscillator. Both sync and cycle modes have the same behavior when an external trigger is applied. This input becomes a soft sync input for the impulse generator. This will largely be interesting when synced from another module, as self patches will only make subtle changes. The two air jack has a simple purpose, but it opens up a number of powerful signal routings. If you think of air as a VCA with distortion at the highest levels, the signal attached here is added to the impulse oscillator right before it enters that wave shaper. So the input is thus seen at the formant output, mixed together with the normal formant signal. The trick here is that the combination happens before the nonlinearity of the air circuit. All kinds of distortion and intermodulation can occur as the signals push in, so you'll likely want to set the air control much lower than normal to avoid squaring up the waveforms too quickly. You should try self-patching the core outputs into this jack while the formant output is sitting at a pitch division. <laughs> It's also a great way to combine another oscillator into a lead voice which really gels together into a single sound, or to create a stable bass from which to manipulate formant to its extremes. Hollow is another output that operates in tandem with formant, so it'll similarly be affected by the formant barrel air trinity.
The name comes from both the sound and the signal generation approach. We use the rising, falling, and resting states of the impulse generator to create a three-state rectangular wave. Rising signals go high, falling signals go low, and resting signals sit at zero. This combination of sharp edges creates a signal rich in odd harmonics, reminiscent of straightboard reeds like the clarinet. It has a mysterious and ghoulish quality when pushed in the right direction, or it can just sound like a PWM oscillator. The other element of hollow is the implementation of air, which is quite different than for the formant output. With hollow, two things happen. First, the VCA does not have the harmonic adding nonlinearity because overdriving a square wave doesn't do anything. Instead, the nonlinearity is inverse. As air is decreased, high frequency content is attenuated. And as the air control is increased, an additional VCA opens in series before the main level, feeding in a square wave from the impulse generator. Here, the square is divided by two, such that it adds a sub-octave beneath the main frequency. And because it sits behind another VCA in tandem with the output, the effect is that the sub-octave becomes increasingly present as air is increased. So try using hollow as a thunderous bass line, or as a lead with voltage-controlled spectral intensity. You can also use it as a fantastic modulation source when operating at the slowest of pitch divisions. Or try using it as a self-patching chaos machine. <laughs> PPM brings new territory to the already beloved landscape of mangrove. The patches in this video are only a few quick ideas, but hopefully they paint a picture of how incredibly dense the possibilities of PPM are. Self-patching will be incredibly rewarding. Introduce analog logic modules, wave shapers, or filters into the feedback pads, and you'll create all kinds of new sounds. Remember that both formant and pitch can be driven into sub-audio range with negative voltage, so think about splitting Mangrove into a modulator audio combination. And don't forget that Mangrove is a great oscillator in its own right. Plenty to be explored with just the original module, and there's no need to get lost in the spaghetti.